I don't know. Yeah, that's that's absolutely true, you know, and that's one of the reasons why I think that security is so highly concentrated in the applications. And there's a lot about security. So, you know what, maybe we should bring the guest on. Yeah, and we could talk about how security is super important to your cannabis business with well, security, Tom. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Tom, can you tell us about Umbrella Technologies? Sure can. I think security is super important. Uh, thank you so much for having me, everyone. Um, so my name is Tom Carnival. I'm one of the founders of Umbrella Technologies. I've been doing security engineering, anything from software that resides on the surveillance cameras to uh, physical layouts, risk analysis, uh, even been involved in penetration testing for Global 100 uh, organizations. So we design physical security infrastructure from surveillance cameras to electronic door access control to putting sensors on your glass or your doors to monitor breakage or vandalism. Um, we can tie some of these systems into Bell business intelligence platform, which I think maybe we'll get to in a little bit is how security and business intelligence, sales and marketing are gonna uh, kind of intertwine together. Um, but ultimately designing, engineering, supplying, uh, and consulting uh, business owners and startup companies, uh, their security needs, including their security plan for this big application, which is a whopping 50 uh, pages. I, uh, I can, let me put you that up there. Yeah, so you're talking Perfect. about exhibit, is a whopping, page. exhibit wow. page, 50 pages. And, and we recommend all 50 pages be filled out. Furthermore, um, there needs to be a security a uh, floor plan that needs to be designed. Now, a lot of these uh, entrepreneurs and startup companies are gonna maybe have a facility planned out uh, so that maybe they can do, uh, in any case, they're either gonna be retrofitting a building or they're gonna be you know, uh, you know, remodeling of some sort. So your walls, your inventory room, your check-in area, your man trap, uh, your vault area, your server room, and your lounge and uh, retail space all need to be designed and sectionalized and labeled with all the security technologies that you need for those environments. Now, let's not forget, once that build out happens, they all have to meet like IEEE specs, which I'm pretty sure you're in accordance with all the time. Well, but... not, there's a lot more than just that. There's yeah. uh, goes down to uh, local low voltage laws, um, security monitoring laws, um, wh where, not not recording audio in specific places, but doing it in other specific places. Uh, oh, wow. how, how long, also a key ingredient is how long you need to retain storage. Yep. And in, in, in Illinois, in the medicinal uh, uh, facilities that we work with, it is 90 days of storage. That yeah, I, believe that's what the, I believe that's what the, uh, the adult use statute also provided, but we yeah. should work together on putting that that thing, uh, because you have to make sure that your security uh, uh, plan complies with the statute. And they actually, on Exhibit eight, when, H, when you're looking at the application, they reference Section 15-100 of the Act. And we've made a checklist at, at the office. That checklist for all these particular provisions of the Act, it's like 30 pages long. Sure. And that's not, you know, to, to just copy and paste it in there, but it's to make sure that you just are checking off that you've addressed it, you know, complying with this and complies yeah. with that. And then that's not all that the security plan uh, contemplates. It also says a contract with a private security contractor licensed under Section 10-5 at the Private Detective, Private Alarm, Private Security, Fingerprint Vendor and Locksmith Act of 2004, which raises the question, is Umbrella Technologies uh, so recognized? Yes. And so that that is a very so first and foremost, if you talk about private alarm, private um, uh, investigator uh, and a locksmith, these are all different core competencies. Right. So it is very, very rare to have one company hold all of those licenses, all meet all of those requirements, because typically you have your locksmith um, do your doors and your locks. Then you have your security uh, investigator kind of plan your security plan or your cash management system. Um, and then you have your security um, engineering firm design the tech, like the cameras, the surveillance, the storage, the redundancy, um, the glass breaks, the alarm. And then there's another company that can do the alarms. And so what we've put together is a group of team members that uh, all have these licenses, all have the experience, and all whom have worked under our 
umbrella, uh, I guess pun intended, um, uh, that can deliver all of these solutions because the, the alternative is the way this is written, it, it frustrated me the second that I read it because there is no company that exists that has all these core competencies. It just doesn't happen. Like <laughs> there's, they're, they're all different types of businesses, but you need to have an overarching consultant guide, monitor, risk analysis, all the different core, uh, you know, uh, skill sets because it's not just one. Well, that's. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, hey, we had a uh, question from one of the uh, watchers, Engineering Cannabis asks, the security plans, does that include uh, cybersecurity? Oh. I mean, you were just explaining that, but can you uh, explain on it a little bit more it's as to so, how that all fits together? It's so funny. Uh, so I'm, I'm a security guy. Ten years ago, uh, when I told people that I was in security, they said, oh, uh, are you a security guard? H how, many, how many guns do you have? Oh, Jesus. You know, uh, seven years ago, they said, oh, surveillance cameras. And I'm like, yeah, I do that too. Um, and then for the past three, four years, whenever I tell someone I don't know I'm in security, they automatically assume that I'm a cyber security uh, engineer. I, I, again, this, this is a different core competency. Cyber elements, all of the security devices, like a surveillance camera, like a proximity card reader um, or a biometric system are all IoT devices that all need to be secured properly under a overarching uh, cybersecurity plan. Um, I host a uh, podcast called Security in Focus, uh, where I interview and we discuss uh, the latest and greatest security technologies, best practices and procedures. We interview anything from uh, security directors uh, uh, of, of facilities to cybersecurity experts to um, directors of securities of healthcare facilities, um, and uh, we had a, we had one of the number one leading cybersecurity hackers on last week, which we just posted on our uh, show, uh, talking how she infiltrates IoT devices and can get into Fortune 200, 100 companies uh, through their surveillance cameras and turn on their cameras, turn on their audio, and uh, get all kinds of other uh, information. And cybersecurity, you know, depending on the question and how he's referring to it, like you're not taking care of the guy's PCs that are in, in you know, doing their C to cell tracking and whatnot. You're taking care of the actual uh, surveillance equipment that you've installed, maintaining up all the firmware and all the other updates in case. So that is right. prevented, right? And it, it, what? how long does your service continue on with that? Like, So you always want to have long-term service and maintenance with any kind of electronic security system. Um, number one, it increases the, the, the life cycle of that investment. Uh, number two, um, it, it eliminates unpredictable costs. When you own a business, and I know, I think you know, all three of us in some way, shape or form are entrepreneurs. Um, the, the thing that I hate probably at the top of the list is surprise bills. I hate them. And so um, having a predictable service and maintenance uh, that it's uh, eight o'clock at night uh, uh, before the busiest day of the season opens and security system is down, which therefore uh, could get fines, uh, you know, due to not being in regulation um, and having to pay a late time weekend charge for a security company to come in. That's something you wouldn't have to worry about if you have a, a service agreement in place. Nice. And then you guys are just involved with the uh, the infrastructure security. Are you going to be involved in like the C to cell RFID tracking type stuff? Eventually? We are doing a lot of API integrations with um, not only C to sale RFID, but point of sale and then business intelligence solutions where you can create heat mapping from the surveillance cameras and understand where people go into your store, where they wow. dwell. Where can I take that data? Position, um, signage, where you can position new inventory. I, yeah. I want that data. Can, yeah, can that's, I have that data? Data. that's what this Do is. Do you have that data? Say again? Do you have that data? We aggregate that data for clients to, to deliver actionable uh, insights for their business. So we don't own, and part of our agreement is we cannot sell that data. However, um, that is that is the service that they uh, that clients sign up for. But that would be a, that would be extremely advantageous because you can understand uh, customer flows, the most popular times throughout the day, days where or like times where it's really light. So you might want to have like some type of special, yeah. uh, you know, to keep people in. I mean, that's 
that's really advantageous information. We can even get, we can even do better than that. So we can also track uh, demographics. We can track uh, time dwelling in line. How long are people waiting in line? Um, what are the ages? What are the, what are the customers? So that you can better profile doing sales and marketing after that. And in addition, there's even, even experimental technology we're working with that can identify mood. So what is the mood when Jane Smith comes into my store on a Wednesday afternoon? Well, she was a little bit down, but when she left, her face was a little bit in her experience and her posture was better. Mm -hmm. And so you can track that and tie it into customer engagement and also time between the time someone enters your door and a uh, customer service representative engages, what is the average statistics of that? So it's allowing business owners to make real business decisions um, by using surveillance. Now, that sounds like amazing tech. What uh, um, Now, you're on the creepy side of things where you are actually using facial recognition, right? Yeah, there's so, so there's facial recognition. I'm actually more talking about more of anonymous facial recognition. Um, so so you, you will have that data from your point of sale transaction. In a dispensary-like environment, I don't necessarily right now see the need for um, facial recognition other than if it's allowed, because honestly, there's a lot of legal debates in Illinois going on in facial recognition. I'm writing a long article on it. Wow. Um, there's a lot of pushback um, uh, from the federal government on the use of facial recognition for commercial organizations in the state of Illinois. Um, so, so that is a very much gray area, but if you take, uh, and, and, and plus you get the identification from the point of sale. So if you can tie that in, you, you could have it anyway, but, um, the ult the, the marketing side of it is more anonymous, you know, uh, analytics. Well, I think people get too worried about it when any camera has a potential to do facial recognition. You're just being, uh, 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 productive into that one little uh, uh, environment where well, no doubt. Yeah, this is designed to make customer experience improve, right? So to right. reduce time in line, reduce time uh, before someone is engaged with position products and marketing initiatives in more uh, you know predictable ways and more effective ways. And and the best use of doing that is surveillance, which is seeing all things um, in your store. And That's a lot amazing. of things. Oh, sorry, baby. I was going to say, like, you know, I just didn't see the value add for um, you know, data, data analytics marketing coming when you have your security agreement. Security, I'm thinking like I'm protecting myself and my employees and my product and my business from theft. I'm not thinking I'm also going to be getting uh, actionable data so that I can create uh, new offerings and uh, maximize value to my customers. That's that aspects of it, I didn't uh, anticipate. Well, you're using the security infrastructure that's regulated um, for, for any business owner in the state of Illinois to use. You're using that same technology and that same stream to aggregate data. Um, so you're using that investment and in getting that um, to force multiply. Furthermore, more and more people are turning off location services. There are, of course, companies that use mobile apps and Facebook and other technologies to identify traffic flow and um, uh, clock in, clock out of locations, right? But more and more people, I mean, I am, I'm turning off my, lo my, my location services specifically at specific times of the day, um, just because I don't want to be tracked all the time, right? And so um, some people leave it off permanently, some people forget that they even had it on and it's just, you're getting tracked all the time, so. Well, and then, again, people forgetting things. It's like with the updates where I was talking about where the most flaws for hacking are because people don't update their goddamn things. You know, yeah. uh, what's that security hotel hack that 90 percent of hotels still haven't updated their shit where right. a simple SRFID card can break into most rooms? Uh, uh, no, I think amazing. Let, right. let me expand on that. That's where I kind of start to geek out a little bit. So, yeah, well, I have some API questions. So I'm in. welcome I'm in. to Cannabis Legalization News, the Nerd Edition, where we <laughs> geek out about uh, all that is cannabis tech. Subscribe Great. now. I can hear the vaginas drying up now. I love it. <laughs> so uh, what you were talking about, Miggy, was uh, proximity card readers. So... So there, so there's basically an RFID on the card and a chip, and so, and that that is communicating a protocol to a door controller in a broom closet somewhere that allows that credential to be opened or or denied, uh, accessed or denied. That protocol is 
40 years old and hasn't changed and it's called Wigan. Okay. And so anybody with a dollar 95 cents, uh, uh, can get a, uh, a BLE key from Amazon, um, and hack a, and infiltrate a, uh, proximity card reader in seconds, because all you need to know is the Wigan protocol, which is on everywhere on the internet. And so, um, that's a big problem in my world that I, I really try to fight against. Well, and then, like as, as Tom was saying about the analytics that you're providing, I mean, you're just thinking next up above with security. Uh, yeah. I never thought about like shit. You're already there. Might as well uh, get this information. Yep. We want more and more people to be using encrypted mobile devices for entry and exit, so that they don't have to distribute like key fobs and proxy these like thin little white cards. Right. Um. You know, more and more people are going to lose them, and what if they get into the wrong hands? Uh using mobile credentials for access that you can keep a phone in your back pocket. It connects via Bluetooth and you just touch the reader. It gives you access. Wow. And this allows the business owner to um, eliminate access uh, from their phone. So what about the smartwatch? To- like my smartwatch unlocks my whole thing now. So, yep. okay. That's Same awesome. Thing. Now let's Same turn thing. the, uh, let's turn this security marketing tech bus to APIs. Cool. Um, uh, so you mentioned that your umbrella technologies is integrating with other point of sale systems and, um, maybe do, do you guys also have integrations with CRMs? I'm not sure how much CRMs are being used, but so that wouldn't be, yeah, yeah. the, 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 that you wouldn't need a ported, uh, API from the video surveillance system because you already have, that's coming from the POS database anyway. Uh-huh. I don't see that's kind of a, maybe if you want redundancy, you could do that, but I would see that CRM tie and going directly into the POS and the POS data being transcribed on the video surveillance footage. Mm. I think that would be the chain of custody that I would recommend users go with. So when you say uh, displayed in the video surveillance, like I'm not familiar with CRM. Uh, for a relations management system. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of like admin shit that I just don't get involved in. Um, but uh, uh, so you're saying that the analytics would propagate onto the display video as the guy's watching his own security video? That's right. Yeah. So and that's what, sent, where is yeah. that sent to? It's mainline to where? So good question. Yeah. So so that 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 script that uh, tran- transaction is actually burned onto the video clip. And I imagine this is all embedded in some sort of uh, crypto that you have in case someone gets a hold of the servers or whatnot. Of course. Yeah. Everything's watermarked and encrypted. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's pretty awesome. And then yeah. the servers are on the business establishment themselves, or are you guys protect the servers? They they are. So so um, you know, I, I we talked a little bit offline about cloud. Right right now, with the with the requirements and regulations and the state of the overall technology as it relates to professional grade surveillance systems, cloud surveillance is not a realistic uh, cost uh, and and functionality for for what um, I believe retail dispensaries need today. Um, in fact, even the language in the law deters from it. It needs to be on-prem um, and so and, and readily accessible. Access That's- control is a whole nother conversation. That can be hosted in the cloud. That can be um, you know, created through, uh, you can manage all of your employees and access control and doors. You can open a door at you know 10 p.m. on a Tuesday from your smartphone and let the cleaning crew come in. Um, all, all of that can be done via cloud, but surveillance, a lot of resolution, still data, even with compressions like H.265 available, uh, and but with 90-day storage, it's not a realistic thing. I don't, I don't think retail customers should be paying twenty dollars per camera per month. I just don't think that that's uh, a viable solution. And, and a server can hold months and months of shit. I imagine someone just doesn't care most of the time and just lets it fill up until they have to refresh it or whatever. You well, know? you have to build in redundancy. And part of that technology ecosystem is not just putting it on the box, but it's making sure the specific drives are like data center drives so that they have a high read write capability. It's having mirrored um, array, um, potentially even things like RAID 6 um, storage. Uh, because this is important footage that is regulated, and and so um, it's not like uh, it's not a problem if footage, you know, your hard drive crashes. This is a big deal. Yeah. So the requirement here in Washington is the WLS, WSLCB, who's in charge of our program here. They actually have uh, access to monitor from their uh, uh, headquarters. Sure. Is that, is that the same thing here in Illinois? Is there going to be a, a one monitoring uh, uh, entity? 
Yes. So, so the city of Chicago has what's called the Office of Emergency Management, and uh, they have a 911 headquarters. If you haven't visited, I highly recommend it. It's 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 an incredible uh, feat, and in 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 most metropolitan cities have not been able to match what the Chicago 911 center has. And so, these are a basically imagine if you ever seen the movie Boiler Room, only 10 hundred times larger with people monitors being able to tap into retail establishments, cameras wow. in street corners, um, even doing forensic rapid search where you can say, hey, uh, I want to know what the red pick, I want, I want you to show me all red pickup trucks. They can do uh, video analytic algorithms and within a geographic space, pull the red pickup truck footage from every single camera. So like when I watch person of interest, that shit's really real. Very, very something, something that we do, we do with cities. Absolutely. Yeah. So just be careful about that, everybody. And just be lucky you're not in China. It's worse in China. But yeah. if you do anything, you're just asking to get caught. I mean, there's no or at least recorded. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, yeah. China is a whole other rabbit hole I can go down with you. That was actually the first podcast episode I, I uh, did. It was entitled, uh, uh, China's influence on American security and how the two major security camera manufacturers, actually, this might be a good thing for awareness because not enough of the general population knows this. Um, and, I, and it's something we talk about on a weekly basis. So the two largest security camera manufacturers in the world um, in volume, in space uh, and revenue um, one of which uh, have just recently been um, uh, sanctioned by the federal government um, and banned for all government use and, and, and a lot of even commercial use in the United States. Some of the reason for that is the number one manufacturer um, called Hick Vision uh, is 51% owned by uh, the Chinese government. Mm -hmm. Literally a government employee sits on the board and runs this surveillance camera manufacturing company that has facial recognition, which is what causes all the issues of, um, uh, and, and so they've also been um, discovered, uh, actually Forbes and the New York Times discovered this several months ago, that this company was involved in um, slave labor camps that where if you, you know, because it is a communist government still in China, pe people don't understand. 70 that. years strong. Right. Um, yeah. And so, so when you, dis the government in China, you can get sent to this concentration camp to be re-educated. Okay. Or your organs are harvested and you never come back. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. so you, th these camps uh, have tons and tons of security, which was all supplied, designed by Hick Vision. Oh, shit. Okay. And yeah. so, um, and so this, uh, this comp these same two companies, Hick Vision and Dawa, have been, um, there have been not only cyber vulnerabilities uh, from turning on um, the audio and recording the audio offline, is essentially espionage, right? Sure. Um, to uh, built-in peer-to-peer phone home algorithms and oh, just right. mass vulnerabilities galore with, um, uh, with, with cyber uh, issues with these camera manufacturers. But the other problem is, is that there's dozens and dozens of companies that private label these Chinese manufacturers' cameras and relabel it as their own. Yeah. So it's hard to know which is the banned camera, which is the vulnerable camera, which is the camera that can turn on audio over the mm -hmm. internet. And that's something that a security insider, I think, can help guide you with. And that's it what we It sounds do. like espionage, espionage has never been easier uh, or like, you know, your chain of custody has never been clearer. It's never been so yeah. simple to get caught doing literally everything you're doing. 100%. Well, you remember years ago, I think it was uh, uh, the handy cams. They, one of them had embedded uh, malware in it that once yeah. you plug your computer, and, you know, it, it was able to put itself into your computer because you had to connect your computer to fucking get your video. That's right. You know? uh, even um, when I used to work at Raytheon, uh, little IC chips, because, you yeah. know, sometimes you had to vet your uh, your employers. And uh, sometimes the, the the bean counter was like, oh, no, these ones are cheaper. Let's go with these cheaper ones yeah. without cheaper even ones. asking. And it would have embedded bad code on it already. Right. Wow. And, you know, people are still surprised that China's – it's a requirement for China to own a percentage of a company that does business with them. When people are praising yeah. Alibaba for fucking doing so well, it's because the government owns it. <laughs> it has nothing to do with that guy who made it. Well, <laughs> you, know? you know, what about Huawei? Yeah. 
What's what's uh, is Huawei making any of these uh, components that you have to use in your security? Yeah, system? yeah. Hu Huawei, yes. Uh, so Huawei. they make uh, digital si signal processors. They make uh, socks, um, software, and a chip that goes in some of these cameras. That goes in also smartphones. That goes in um, all kinds of electronic devices that we use every day. They were the number one target by the U.S. government. Was was Huawei. Um, uh, and, um, you know, they're, they're another, you know, other people know them as high silicon and, um, they took over the market rapidly in a six year space by basically putting all the software, all the intelligence, all on a chip. So product manufacturers had their, their cost to market reduced dramatically. And so they were put in all the GoPros in the world. They were put in um all all surveillance camera a ton of surveillance cameras um even and, and these chips were made by a chinese company that's owned by the chinese government 100 percent right i i can see why people would be a little bit nervous well even now you know <clears throat> i always tell tom this is my frustration with uh, as american citizens and we're kind of lazy about uh things that are fucked up in our country because i mean right now you have people flooding the streets in hong kong or right. even at Kiev, you know, over the democracy. And, uh, uh, and the, as a cannabis activist, you know, we're, we've been just shouting, Tom and I, for 10 years that, hey, free all these people that are in jail for who haven't done anything. Right. You know, uh, uh, it's a medical, now it's legal in our nation's capital. Uh, uh, when's everybody else going to get pissed off? <laughs> you know? But yeah, I mean, we'll definitely. New. Yeah. But security <laughs> is definitely a, a threat. I mean, it's definitely something that is always in the back of our minds. Hell, I take off the, uh, the little sticker on my, my cam here. You know, mm -hmm. when, when we do this every Wednesday. Yeah. So I'm sure, sure you do. Just like you said, you turn off your own location. Absolutely. I, I, right. well, I mean, we do, all, we, all, we do a lot of other cyber uh, areas here. But I, I think a big thing that we run into in mass markets and with this big um, initiative and so little applications available, but so many people want a big uh, or, or a slice of the pie is we're, we're basically talking to the consumer market who thinks they know security via the marketing of companies like Ring and Google and Amazon. Um, and, you know, when I started in security 18 and a half years ago, there, there, the, a, a home security camera system was very expensive. Yep. Okay. It was very expensive. And then, um, you know, when Google bought Nest Cam, Nest, um, uh, or I'm sorry, Drop Cam for, uh, for or Nest bought, or Google bought Nest, Nest bought um, uh, Drop Cam for half a billion dollars. And that was like, what was that, eight years ago, the market exploded. Then Amazon bought Ring and all these other little startup companies, which are basically just little, some of them have high silicon chips in them as well. Um, but or rather just helping high. them steal. We're just exactly. helping them steal. Exactly. Yeah. And so there, there's just these little basically a step above your computer's webcam uh, put on your front door with a little bit of, you know, software integration with with APIs. But that is not a professional surveillance camera system. Your your those cameras look really great when you're a foot away from them pushing the the doorbell. But um, having a camera up in the corner and wanting to identify people all the way on the other side of a room, there's light, there's all these kinds of different elements. And the sensor sizes are also much larger with professional surveillance cameras. Um, and you can manage video and include other things like access control and alarms and glass break sensors. There's just such a big misunderstanding of between what a commercial security system is for retail versus what's good for my home front door camera. And, and that's so something we also fight counters. And people always overestimate what they think they know, and they always try to uh, discount all the costs. That's right. You know? And so because of that, and they ask me like, well, I can read, I don't need a lawyer. I'm like, that's fine. You know, they'd probably be like, well, I can go buy a $600 thing from uh, Costco and then just rig that up and I have video surveillance. Why do I need all this other stuff? I'll, I'll go. Well, they have a cousin Eddie that can do it for them. Or yeah. they have who? They have a buddy. They, they have a cousin Eddie. You know? they, they have a buddy. Yeah. yeah. And so, like, my buddy's a lawyer. I had him look at this. I'm like, what's he do? Oh, product liability, but not too right. much anymore. I'm like, okay, great. So you. Yep. Yeah. All right. Plus, he's not invested. I mean, the nine-page right. application you guys have already proves that you know, speaking you two, uh, having a professional lawyer and a professional security person, you know, all these requirements that are in that application, you bang for your buck. You want to go that way if you're going to get involved in this shit. 
period. And that's actually a really good point back to the application is because this this line that they put in with, with the regulations, it, it's listing all these different security licenses and competencies. And it's just like with, with you know, attorneys, there's one that practice intellectual property law, others pra practice real estate law, right. others are criminal defense. And so with security, they're listing eight different components. Now, I would be lying to any one person if I told them that I can do private investigations and fingerprints for them. I don't know how to do that. But because I'm in the security industry and I'm a veteran of nearly 20 years, I know the local people who are, who I'm, whom I've worked with, and that's why building this team to attack uh, this vertical market was so key for us uh, because we have the best in breed um, down to the dollar and cents uh, optimized for these new entrepreneurs that come into the market. So well, when you, one of your clients then when they because they have to sign that contract, like I said, like you got you, the security company, are the only ones who's literally in its exhibits calling for you to have that. Like they don't have to hire all of the licenses that uh, are underneath our contract. Yeah, but they, 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 they're, they're, it's right there in the statute that you need that contract with a company like yourself. Yep. Are you also going to help these people, uh, these applicants in the drafting of their 50 pages of security plan? We are. We, uh, yeah. from the design build layout to, um, which is an important area, to uh, their cash management process, um, what is their culture of security? Uh, plan with training employees, how to, how to use customer service. How does that, how do you find that intersects then? Because a lot of the operational consultants will say that they can help with these types of security plans. And then you touched on various other uh, areas where security is important and it gets into that. Like for example, your employee training program, but um, how are you interacting with other uh, cannabis consultants to put together those applications? We've talked to a lot of them. Uh, right. and, and so usually the conversations go like this. Um, oh, you're an expert in that. Well, we do the whole application for, for companies. And, mm -hmm. and so the conversations are typically short some, some because they think they know it all. But um, right. unfortunately to the uh, um, applicant that might not be best served. We, we do have other partnerships where we are a subcontractor to them because 50 pages is a lot um, of content that is solely dedicated to the security plan and accounts for 26% of your points um, towards being awarded, which is a lot. I mean, basically, if you get it wrong, you're gonna you're not gonna get approved. That's um, a huge chunk. Yep, it is. More than social equity. Yeah. Right. And I was, you know, and again, uh, as I was telling you earlier before the camera was a uh, uh, welcome to cannabis because. Uh, uh, I think it's great that you're an auxiliary company, you know, it has nothing to do with marijuana, but decide, you know what, I'm willing to go put my name out there, my company's name, my face and, and say, Hey, I'm willing to work with you and help with this security plan. I'm, it's great to see you here, even you're, as a non-consumer of cannabis, you know, I think it's great. I'm really glad you said that Miggy earlier this year, I wrote an article that uh, maybe I'll get you guys to, to share. Um, the security industry, there's still a big majority that want nothing to do with this space. It's Maybe. the same with all the industries. It's um, the same with legal. They don't want anything to do with it. So like, here's the big issue that I have. A lot of the cannabis discrimination uh, cases, they're plaintiffs, you know, and so they're worried about discrimination on either their employer or their landlord side. And they'll, they'll Google it and they'll find me. And I'm like, uh, you know, I can make a referral, but a lot of the plaintiff employee discrimination attorneys that I know, they aren't touching it because it's still cannabis. Yeah, we are knocking on 2020 and it is a different world. And, you know, it's just like anything else. Um, people can either get stuck in the past and, 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 and worry about uh, uh, how perception or they can focus on results and bring value. And I, and I think that's really what the name of the game is, is people that are focusing on execution versus um, worried about how people will see them. Um, so right. no, that's pretty awesome, dude. I really, really appreciate yeah. you just, just saying, hey, here's another market, period. It it is, we've been doing it for a few years now. We started with some growing in uh, facilities. We've done some uh, hemp extraction lab laboratories. We've done some uh, uh, growing um, uh, facilities as well, both indoor and outdoor, which mm -hmm. Is, is very completely different designs and threats um, that they have. Uh, and then we've done some medical dispensaries as well as some legal out, outside the state of Illinois. So um, it's something, I, it's just like any other business. And I think because of what's going on with the media and everything else, it's a high risk business is the way I see it. And it's, um, 
people that really need to be secured and need help and they need to understand how this works. So yep. um, how, I don't how, think it is anything else other than that. How I don't know if you're involved in any farms. How would you do actual surveillance for a farm, like acres and acres of land? How does yeah. that work? Um, light and audio. So, um, so motion sensors that can, um, you know, detect, you know, human or, or, or animal motion, um, versus, um, you know, something blowing, you know, uh, you know, limb, you know, leaves on a, on a tree, uh, you know, but physical motion activity. Um, and then as soon as that is, is ignited with, with lights, and then sometimes we even put pre-programmed audio sirens or pre-recorded, um, uh, you know, statements um, saying intruder alert, or if they want to play some jazz music or something like that, anything they, they want to do to catch. Because typically there's only one thing that happens once that light and that audio goes on is they they run. And yeah. so, um, so, so that tied in with potentially solar uh, uh, solar infrastructure with, with 3G, 4G connections um, for remote monitoring. Um, is, is is the way to go and potentially fencing it, it depends on the landscape but ev every system is different are you guys planning to do an update to the 5g uh i mean that that you know we're going to use whatever carrier has the best throughput right so um of course yeah yeah well, I mean, it never part, stops you're in a technological uh industry now and because of that like it sounds like it, it you're in this business that saw a new cash flow in the cannabis space but then also saw another new cash flow in the data space yep. that it was gathering for its cannabis clients. That's right. Yeah. I, that, that's what I hope in the next five years this, this turns into is this merger of security and business intelligence because um, so many people want to do be more effective in, in, in physically coming outside of your home or off your, your phone buying and creating positive shopping experiences outside of the internet is not just the cannabis world's problem. It is the retail industry's yeah. problem with, wow. with stores like Toys R Us closing its doors nationwide last year before Christmas, right? Like right. Um, this is still a threat. This is still a retail threat, even though we're having, you know, a quote unquote gold rush to the 75 t golden tickets here in Illinois, mm -hmm. there's still retail businesses and e-com is going to, uh, circumvent some way, shape, or form, um, and that should be still risk. Honestly, risk number one: How can we create a better customer experience from fulfillment to engagement? Um, and you can do that with security technologies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like you said, the analytics alone can provide help your customer just yeah plan a day. The econ is definitely there. I can buy uh, on my dispensary's website and then just go pick it up. That's right. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So, are you guys gonna be doing delivery too? Like, do you guys ever do a transportation involvement with security or anything? That's part of that's part of our uh, as part of our dream team. Yeah, okay. that's part of our dream team is the folks that do the armed guard cash management systems. Yeah, because yeah, so, they they do not allow the uh, the delivery of cannabis flour under the statute in Illinois. Yet, yeah, but oh yeah, no, I, I delivery. Yeah, no, we're uh, so cash management on armed guards is also part of the security plan. That's uh, very important and. What about the uh, transportation of the cannabis itself? Very good question. I mean, there's mobile camera systems. There's body worn camera systems that you could use as dash cams. Um, we have technologies actually that are very cost effective. For five hundred dollars, you can get a mobile body worn camera. You could wear it on your on your person. You could dock it on a docking station on your dashboard and use it as a dash cam. Um, it's it's uh, encrypted at the edge um, as well, and so you have to have. Uh, a username and password and a specific login with a with a serial key to plug it into its its uh, docking main docking device to even extract the data. Um, but uh, that's something that would be a really cost effective solution for a um, someone who's transporting transporting it and also records yep. audio as well. We'll see the transport license here after the first of the year, but it wouldn't surprise me if that also requires, I know it'll require a security plan, but right. it may also require a contract with a company like uh, Umbrella Securities. Absolutely. Yeah. How many so states are you in? Technologies. Umbrella Technologies. There you go. You got it. Yeah. How many states are you in, Thomas? Uh, New Jersey, California, uh, Seattle, Colorado, um, Texas, Arizona and Florida. 
Nice. Are those all cannabis related or? So those are projects we have either done cannabis growing facilities, medical or um, consulting design work. Okay. That's yes. pretty cool. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, we have a nice customer base in, in, in you know, outside LA too. Um, but we're, we're, we're not like an ADT now we're, we're a business to business, you know, pretty specific security technology firm. And so, uh, um, you, you know, we're not the, the, you know, we're not going to be like uh, us cellular, uh, that has the, uh, the, the, the brands, we're not going to market like that because yeah. we're, we're very, very B2B. You're not ADT. You're not the little sign saying we're protecting. No. no, you're just providing the tools and the, uh, you know, the, the analytics for the, the customer to decide right. for themselves how they want to perform their business, which is pretty awesome, dude. That's right. And they're they're helping with twenty six percent of the points. I mean, the security plan. Oh, that's that's heavy. Twenty six percent. Well, Jeez. I could I could bring up the actual scoring on the FAQ itself, but still a uh, quarter of the points. Come on, that's crazy. I mean, it's, it's great for you. <laughs> well, of course, you know. But I mean, well, that's the social equity part. That's what I'm comparing it to. It's like, why can't that part be a little bigger? You and know? I saw that the 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 history and performance of the entrepreneur was only what what three pages or something like that. Oh yeah, yeah. It was only like three pages. The you know, um, this should seems like yeah, should it's uh, security and record keeping. Sixty-five points. Yep. So you know, sixty-five out of two hundred and fifty. I mean, yeah, twenty-six percent, like you said. But hey, Thomas, uh, uh, lawyer Tom, uh, the uh, yeah. uh, the social equity program though that that includes a uh, uh, a loan, right? If you fill out and- If you qualify for it, that you would be eligible to apply for those types of loans. You don't have to have them. Uh, the social equity aspects of the application were, were listed as optional, uh, as opposed to required. So, you know, it doesn't change your, um, uh, your proof of your financials and your financial evidence that you could give, that's an unlimited page number as well. So if you have the social equity points, but absolutely zero money and you haven't, you know, you, you, you're, you have the Costco surveillance system as your security mm -hmm. plan uh, and you, you spent 20, 10, $20,000 putting together your entire application. I just don't know how, I mean, you'll get your social equity points, but I just don't know how many of the other points you'll pick up, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And again, 20K is not what you want to start a business with. <laughs> no, especially not in the cannabis industry. Yeah. Uh, we have, you have to pay taxes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we uh, figured, what, I, half a million for a decent small craft? Oh, no. For like craft grows, it really yeah. depends. I mean, the craft grows, you could make those. Uh, you could make a $10 million building a craft grow. I mean, think about it. You could make a $10 million bar if you wanted. How capitalized are you? What is your business model? How does this look? You know, what are you employing? There's right. all these questions that you can ask, but, um, you know, it, how how adequately capitalized are you? If you're really trying to find out which one of the craft grows are going to be the cheapest ones that was approved, we'll find out in 2020. You know, so we'll find out next fall. Yeah. Crazy. Hey, uh, I got to wrap it up here. Gotta wrap it up. <laughs> it's just hey. so much fun as it goes by, isn't it? Yeah. yeah no, I learned a lot, though, with the analytics stuff. That's crazy. It's, it's creepy. Before we go, Tom, can you tell us where we can follow uh, Umbrella Technologies? Sure. Our website is umbrellatech.co. Our Twitter is Umbrella SYS. Uh, you can find us on Instagram at Umbrella underscore technologies. Uh, and if you Google or search on Facebook, we're there too. Um, uh, but yeah, Umbrella Technologies is the best place to start is our website, umbrellatech.com. Hey, Miggy, where did we find you? I think find so. me at Weed News, CEO. And I hope to see all of you guys at the Illinois Cannabis Summit in two weeks on October 4th. Oh, yeah. All right. And come say hi to Tom. And yeah, Tom. I'm actually speaking. I'm speaking. Uh, I'm one of the oh, speakers. Wow. So my topic is going to be uh, security, cannabis security Frozen. systems the, from application to door opening. What what you know, we're going to talk about, what uh, what it costs for these security systems. We're going to talk about the application plan um, and everything in between. So I will be an exhibitor and I will be speaking at that event. I will see you there. Awesome. If you need anything, you know, come say hi to us at that. And also Google Cannabis Lawyer. Peace out, everybody. And I think we're now...